Yo, for the past two months or so, I've been trying to learn C++ for game development. I figured that making games with C++ would make my games more portable than if I were to make the games in Python. This would make my game jam games more accessible as my games could, for example, be ported to the web. I thought making games with C++ would be pretty straightforward, but involve lots of restarting and reworking. I had watched a few C++ videos to get the gist of the syntax. I then installed a C++ compiler and made a prime number finder. It required me to understand loops, selection statements, pointers and arrays, so I thought it was a good first program to make. After this, I felt good enough to start learning SDL, and a whole three days later, I had a window up that could display a PNG image. Most of my trouble was caused by me forgetting to include this pesky line when compiling the code. I believe all it does is reference a library, in this case, SDL image. Anyway, I started watching a C++ and SDL2 tutorial by Coda Gopher, which helped me to set the structure for making a game. Pygame, the Python library used in all these videos, is actually a wrapper for SDL so this helped me a bit to understand how SDL worked with C++. I finished the tutorial, or at least all the videos that were in the playlist, and had a basic understanding about how SDL2 worked. I wanted to be able to use shaders in my game like I've done with Pygame, so I used OpenGL alongside SDL. I made a new C++ file and started experimenting. Once I got this orange triangle on the screen, I knew I was on the right track. After like 5 days, mostly with the help of my own trusty friend, I got this triangle rendering. However, what I wanted was for the window to be converted into a texture, then passed into a fragment shader, so I could make some cool post-processing effects. I first tried to just load a PNG image as a texture and display it through OpenGL rather than SDL. My code produced some weird bugs, but I got there in the end. When loading in the texture, I changed its parameters from GL linear to GL nearest. GL nearest is better for pixel art because it doesn't blur the texture. Whenever I got stuck, I could usually refer back to my Pygame projects. Although the code was not the exact same, there were some similarities that helped me to debug. Got shade is working, however I was using the Glau, Glue, Glue, yeah the Glue library, but it didn't work when compiling with mscripten. This led to the... Yeah, it wasn't really a major problem. I eventually figured out that I could use both the Glue and GLES libraries in my project. This took me so long to figure out, but was implemented pretty quickly. All I had to do was add the following lines of code wherever I needed to use any OpenGL functions. All it did was declare the right library depending on which build, Windows or web, was being used. The Glue library was used when compiling for Windows, and the GLES3 library when compiling to the web. I had to make separate versions for each shader because the web build used GLSLES, while the Windows build used just GLSL. I could copy and paste most of the code because the syntax was basically the same, however I later figured out a way to remove the need for separate shaders. I spent a lot of time ensuring shaders worked on my web and windows build. This is because game jam games on the web tend to, not always, but tend to do better because more people are able to play them. And shaders, at least for me, play an important role in improving the graphics of a game. All was going well until I tried to convert the screen into an OpenGL texture. This led to the... In order for my code to work on the web build, I had to switch from using SDL textures to SDL surfaces. Textures are stored on the GPU, while surfaces are stored on the CPU. Using textures results in faster code, however, the SDL renderer, for some reason, wasn't happy with OpenGL ES. I knew this method of rendering would be slower, but as long as it worked, I'd be happy. However, there was another oversight which led to the it turned out I couldn't do rotations with surfaces alone without using SDL GFX, but that was very slow. This meant I had to do all the rendering through OpenGL. Rather than using SDL textures or surfaces, I'd use OpenGL textures. Now this scene may look the same, but it can now do this. Wait, never mind. It can now do this. Much better. After I found a suitable way of rendering things, I added frame rate independent. Oh, that does not look right. Ah, there we go. As I was saying, I added frame rate independence. This basically means that a game would run at the same speed no matter the frame rate. Without it, a better computer would literally run the game faster than a slower computer. Since drawing only a thousand tiles lagged out the game, I knew that I needed to add some optimizations. 
I was making a draw call for every tile, so I figured that was what was causing the lag. Instead of passing tile data as uniforms, I passed it into an instant buffer. I didn't know they existed, but they are so useful. They basically allow me to render multiple objects while changing parameters specific to that object. For example, its size, position, and texture clip. I also used a texture atlas so I could draw multiple objects while reducing the number of textures so therefore memory being used up. It took a few bugs but I got the texture atlas working. A texture atlas is just a bunch of sprites packed onto one texture. I also started implementing an entity component system. This was a data oriented way of programming which I wasn't used to as I've always used an object oriented approach when making games in Python. Rather than having a base entity class from which all entities inherit Entities are just IDs and different components can be attached to those IDs. Learning C++ was fun. As I kept making code, I thought I'd get the hang of something. Then I'd learn something new and realize I had a limited understanding of something. And this cycle would repeat as I slowly improved in skill. To test my framework, I quickly put together a small platformer. It took me longer than I'd like to admit, but I eventually finished the project and was happy with the final result. Since I designed my game framework around being able to use shaders, I wanted to use them for some post-processing. I added chromatic aberration, random noise, a CRT overlay, a glow to the player, and a vignette. And that's all I made. Stick around to see the improvements I make to this framework, if you can even call it that, and how I use it in future projects. Peace.